When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, And trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, And look upon myself and curse my fate. Sonnet 29 is a powerful expression of the speaker's struggle with feelings of isolation, despair, and self-loathing due to societal disgrace, yet finds solace in the thought of a beloved friend. The speaker expresses feelings of isolation and despair, lamenting his misfortune and societal rejection. He cries out to a seemingly indifferent heaven and in self-reflection bemoans his own fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy contented least. In this stanza, the speaker continues to express his feelings of envy and dissatisfaction with his own circumstances. He wishes to be like someone more rich in hope, meaning someone with more reasons to be optimistic about their future. He envies not just the material wealth or status of others, but their talents, this man's art, and opportunities or ambitions, that man's scope. The speaker feels lacking in comparison to these others, who are seemingly blessed with friends, skills, and a promising future. There is also a sense of irony in the last line of the stanza, where the speaker says he is least content with what he enjoys most. This could mean that the speaker's own passions or talents bring him little joy because of his current state of despondency and envy. Yet in these thoughts myself, almost despising, haply I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. The third stanza of Sonnet 29 shifts the poem's tone from despair to a more hopeful and reflective mood. The speaker describes a turning point in his emotional journey. Despite the self-pity and envy characterized in the previous stanzas, thinking of thee, usually interpreted as the speaker's beloved, transforms his spirits. The mention of, yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, indicates that even at the height of his self-deprecation and envy, the mere thought of his beloved lifts his spirits. The comparison of his uplifted spirits to a lark at break of day arising from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate is a powerful metaphor. The lark, rising from the dark, gloomy earth into the light of dawn to sing joyfully, represents the speaker's transition from despair to joy. This transformation is not because of a change in his external circumstances, but rather the internal shift in focus towards his love. This stanza underscores the theme of love's power to transcend the speaker's circumstances, elevating his spirits from the depths of despair to the heights of joy. It highlights the contrast between the material and social desires that plague the speaker earlier in the poem and the simple, profound joy that love brings him, serving as a reminder of the transformative power of love and positive reflection. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. The final stanza of Sonnet 29 brings the poem to its resolution emphasizing the power of love and inner peace over external circumstances. The speaker reveals the profound impact that the memory of his beloved's love has on his sense of well-being. The sweet love remembered is so valuable to him that it transforms his perception of his own situation, providing him with a sense of wealth that is beyond material riches. The love he feels is so fulfilling that he would not trade his position with anyone, not even kings. This is a significant statement considering the envy and discontent expressed in the earlier stanzas of the poem. The word scorn here is powerful, indicating a strong rejection of the idea of exchanging his life with that of a king, which is a stark contrast to the envy of others' fortunes he described earlier. This shift underscores the theme that true happiness and contentment come not from external possessions or status, but from love and personal relationships. This final stanza completes the transformation of the speaker's outlook. It moves from despair and envy to a celebration of the intrinsic value of love, which is portrayed as the greatest wealth one can possess. The poem as a whole, thus, underscores the idea that the love and connections we have are far more valuable than any material wealth or social standing.